Okay, so for today's adventure, I am going to pour some curb, uh, or curb backing rather. Um, and it's a very short journey, so I'm going to let the entire journey play for you out. Um, now unlike uh, other like slip form type curbs where there's a curb machine and the curb machine just moves down a particular path, um, around here uh, the curbing that I'm most familiar with is the big granite pieces of curbing that get placed on the ground and then they order concrete to either back it up. Usually you pour on the front and you pour a little on the back um, and you just move on down the road like that. Uh, they usually want it not super super wet but maybe on a little bit on the moist side so it gets down and flows in and around all the crevasses and whatnot. Um, that's generally how how it's done. Uh, there is slip form type curb that gets poured in this area. Um, I personally have not actually seen it done myself, but it is something that is done in this area. But, like I said, most of the curbing that I'm familiar with is what you're about to see. But, very short journey. Not even a minute down the road. Uh, the lovely town of Ludlow, Massachusetts. I was building a new elementary school. Um, so that's where I'm heading right here. So as you can see, there's a trench sort of in front of the curb, and then there's kind of a trench behind the curb. Um, on this particular day, they wanted me to fill both sides. Uh, sometimes they just have one side that they're trying to at least fill, and then if, once they have a particular linear footage covered, they'll have you do the other side too, but they had them both dug out today, and they wanted both to fill their side. Uh, there uh, was kind of a lot going on here. I mean, you can see they also have some sidewalk forms set up. Um, obviously, the main structure at this point of the school is in place, but none of the interior was finished and whatnot. Um, we were not here, or we were not called back here to do the sidewalks. There was a different um, company uh, pouring those sidewalks, and they were using a different supplier. Um, but we were in and out of here a lot, doing all of the curb backing, any of the underground utility stuff uh, we were called to pour the duct bank on top of it uh, there was a lot of thrust blocks that we were in here to pour um, but yeah so I have myself lined up right now to pour my concrete on the back side of the curb um, so they had a point that they stopped at last time you know whether it was a day before or a couple days before so I just picked up where that guy left off, and then I'm going to back up and sort of follow the radius um, as I need to. It's kind of like a similar process if you were to pour a duck bank or like a footing or anything like that. You just sort of watch for hand signals and kind of figure out how high they want to keep it and then just kind of, you know, stay at that grade and move on down the line. More or less like anything else, um, once you get a rhythm going, just stick with that rhythm and it'll usually work out. Uh, they definitely don't like it if you get concrete on the granite curbing itself because it's, you know, kind of a pain in the ass to then clean back off. Um, you know, sometimes it's, it happens, it's unavoidable. Um, but in general, if you're doing this, you know, you try to keep your concrete off of the granite. Yeah, 
it looks like on this particular day I only put on one add-on shoot, um, which is perfectly fine as long as I was able to make it work. Uh, sometimes if you're doing radiuses, it's just always easier to put me, two shoots get, on. Because uh, at this point. Okay. At this point, like I was, you know, communicating with the crew here that I needed to realign myself to get closer. Whereas if I had both of my add-on shoots, I may have been able to make it work and not have to realign. Um, but it's not a huge deal. I just what I ended up doing was pulling back right. up to then do the front side and then realigned to then do the back side and then the front side again. Not a huge deal. If you look in my upper mirror, you can actually see how slow my drum is actually turning. Um, that's a decent pace for the size of the crevasse that they have for my concrete. Um, sometimes, depending on you know how it was excavated and whatnot, you'll have a really giant crevice or crevasse that you're trying to fill. You can get going pretty fast and move right down the line to keep it filled really fast. Um, then sometimes the crevasse that you have to fill is so, so small you actually can't pour into it normally. You have to stop your drum and they kind of shovel it out yeah. of your chute and then push it down in between the way they have to cut off the tar and the granite. So it just on all depends. But see here I was realigning myself. Um, to get closer to the straight line part of the uh, curbing that they had set up. Um, I don't really think if I had both add-on shoots I'd have been able to stay in line with it because it was a pretty tight radius that I had to go around, uh, tighter than I could turn the truck technically. So I still would have had to realign, I would have just been able to make it a little bit further if I had both add-on shoots on. Not a huge deal, just you know something that I'm noting now that I'm watching it.
So usually what I do is when I'm coming up to the end is I'll stop my drum about uh, when I have the last piece of curb I know I have to pour right off of the side of my fender and then at that point because there's still concrete in the chute it'll keep flowing keep flowing down and then the flow will stop right when I'm about that last curb or halfway through that last curb and then at that point I just back up a little bit and then they'll scrape down what they need out of the chute and that seems to be a fairly good system for making not making a mess and whatnot So now at this point, they had asked how much I actually have left in the truck. I had climbed up there and looked, and uh, apparently I had like a yard or half a yard. Um, so what they ended up having me do um, is pull all the way back forwards. And uh, as I was doing that, the guy had the hose out and he was washing off the face of the curb. And um, then they just had me make another pass on the back side of the curb to get rid of whatever was left in the truck. And I was able to get empty, so. No harm, no foul. Worked out good. And just like that, I'm gone. And yes, I'm gonna head back with just the one shoot on and actually wash out back at home base since it's so close. Um, most of the drivers that were being sent here were doing this pretty much the entire project because it's, you know, legitimately a 20 second drive right down the road. So it worked out well. But yeah, that's that. Quick little uh, curb backing pour. Nothing particularly special. Now I get to load it up and get set on another one.